the uh, BK-72. So I started that uh, basically a week ago, and I got the uh, track on. Uh, the turret's going to be removable, so you can uh, move it however you would like. And decided to go with the uh, long barrels. So I got that on, and I started working on the uh, hatches here. I got the, I guess, plate, if you want to call it. Got that glued on, and I'm going to cut out the... Uh, Hatches and everything, but I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go print out a picture of the completed model so I can see where some of the little uh, little parts go. Cause uh, I can basically get the basic parts on, but the rest of it I'm gonna have to uh, go in and uh, see uh, where things go. But anyway, that's pretty taking shape. It's one of those uh, pretty darn slick, just a nice, uh, very cool design. But anyway, more on that. Uh, very very soon the uh, tiger I didn't uh, get anything done I'm basically uh, I'm gonna try to start on it in a day or two I gotta I gotta go back in and uh, fix some of the uh, uh, track where you see a little more white I mean it's believable but I think it needs to be a little more darker and all that and then uh, just paint I gotta finish uh, weathering the track and I'll be uh, pretty much done with the uh, tiger so uh, more on that in a day or two but I wanted to uh, I wanted to learn something and I did uh, did just do that and that is pigment binder and uh, basically when you put uh, pigments and or a uh, you know uh, powders on a uh, vehicle or you know figure or anything else you need to seal it well I always thought you pretty much had to use a like a brush you know dip it on and uh, get it on and I've done that but it's always like clumpy or you know real hard well I was like there's got to be an easier way to do it and you can take a pigment binder and you can put it in Mr. O airbrush here and uh, spray it but now when you first spray it though you always get that you know a little air before you get the paint so if you do the uh, air first and then uh, get some spray going, and then you can uh, spray over the model like so. And uh, it uh, goes on uh, very, very thin, very, very light. It doesn't come off. I've already uh, tried that. I didn't try it on the tank here. I don't like to experiment on people's models. Uh, but on my test one, I had actually, uh, I actually sprayed it on uh, the tank as well. And uh, nothing comes off on your fingers, and uh, you are good to go. Uh, I didn't know that was possible, and uh, so with the uh, this is Vallejo's pigment binder. I assume MIGs and AKs and all the other manufacturers should do the same thing. So that was uh, I learned today. So that was uh, very exciting. So now I can uh, uh, now I can put on pigments and uh, spray it with the binder, and then uh, we're good to go. Also, just a bonus, airbrushing this it makes it a matte finish. So. Uh, it didn't uh, gloss or anything so almost done with the crocodile I gotta do one more thing and that's the exhaust back here you can see where it's a little bit gray I need to uh, I'm gonna take airbrush and I'm gonna do some ink and get them a little more blackened and I'm gonna uh, take uh, the airbrush with the ink and I want to do a little shading just just a tad a few little places that I would like and I'm gonna call it done and then uh, we'll get this off the workbench to its rightful owner and then we'll continue on with the uh vk but anyway that's a quick update wanted to uh, share one i was very uh very pleased that you could uh airbrush the uh, pigment binder and seal the pigments on any uh vehicle so that was a unique uh learning experience but anyway that's what i got going on today i learned today that you can uh airbrush pigment binder Getting real close to finishing the crocodile. We're going to start painting the track, get that all taken care of, and then we are starting the uh, VK. So that's what I got going on today. So stay tuned for the next exciting episode.